Hello and welcome to Forgotten Florida. I'm Wes and uh, usually I'm behind the camera but today I'm in front of the camera because we have a very special guest today. Uh, with me is Robert Hurst and we're here at the uh, Bay County Historical Society Museum talking about his new book, uh, The Spanish Road. So, uh, Mr. Hurst, tell us about yourself and, and how you got started on this project. Well, I have uh, ever since high school been interested in uh, old roads and old railroads um, and my first one was really in high school. I mapped the uh, old St. Joseph railroads uh, nearby and uh, that was actually published in the historical um, quarterly, historical society quarterly. Um, and um, I have um, been doing a lot of pioneer roads um, in the area. The, uh, I've been using aerial photographs um, and I got uh, in touch with this uh, map up here that uh, was done in 1778 and realized that I was looking at the old Spanish trail across Florida. It's the only definitive map of the, of the road. And tell what, and exactly what is the old Spanish trail? So walk us through that. Uh, it was a road that went from St. Augustine over to um, Pensacola. I guess you could say in the 1600s and 1700s, it would have been the I-10 of the time. And uh, yeah, it was, it was the land route across North Florida. But it predates the Spanish, so it's a Native American route eventually, or uh, initially, I guess? <laughs> well, parts of it probably were Indian trails. In fact, uh, the part over near Pensacola was called the Lower Creek Trading Path. And it was probably, even before the Seminoles came in there, they, it was probably uh, an Indian trail going north from the Pensacola area. Mm -hmm. So starting from, let's say, like uh, Pensacola uh, to the east, so exactly kind of where did the trail uh, uh, where did it the, go? The geography of um, Florida uh, was such that um, the southern part of the area is covered with bays and rivers and marshes. So in those days, the easiest thing for them to do would be to get up on higher ground. So this trail from Pensacola went up to the highlands, um, Laurel Hill area, and then across Florida um, on the, what they call the Florida Highlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, eventually though, it had to, it, it went down into the uh, uh, San Pedro uh, swamp area, the uh, Alachua, which in Indian means the sink. And we call the uh, stadium down there the swamp, don't we? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's a good name for it. <laughs> And uh, of course, from there it went uh, over to uh, St. Augustine, St. Augustine, crossing the enormous body of water called the St. John's River. And so, how did they how did they afford that? <laughs> and let me tell you, it wasn't easy, especially when you had an army and you got to that, uh, like the St. John's River. Well, when you got to that, it didn't look like a river. You looked like you were looking across a bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took them three or four days to get an army across. That was the British and the uh, Spanish, and that's documented. So w I read in your book they, they used the na there was a natural bridge. So I guess they used like natural landscape like that. But they were they building bridges and stuff along the way too, and the uh, their records doing construction. I guess you yeah, say. their their records uh, of the Brit of the uh, Spanish uh, building bridges, but they utilized uh, as many of the natural um, sites as they could. For example, there were natural bridges across the Santa Fe uh, that was used. Uh, they used uh, uh, natural bridges on the Asilla and on the Econfina as well uh, for crossings. Mm -hmm. So if I was a traveler 
leaving St. Augustine, I was in one of these, say, the Spanish Army. How long is the trip to Pensacola? And, well, what, are, and what are my chances of surviving that trip? <laughs> <laughs> the the um, Spanish priests at the missions got to where they hated to send the Indians uh, over to St. Augustine to, for supplies and all because they, they were liable not to survive. They, they became so uh, saddened by, by the deaths of so many of them that they just quit going. Well, it, it created uh, sickness for the, the Padres as well as the Indians because they couldn't get supplies. Uh, but um, it took a British army, not a Spanish army, um, 32 marching days to mm. get from Pensacola to St. Augustine. So that's not including the days camping no. or refer, you know, resupplying water and foraging for food. And Th that's right. It, that's marching days, so 32 days. Maybe 40, 40 plus days or more. 465 miles going through swamps and crossing rivers, bays, um, probably a, a Fighting off a few Indians as well. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was Marcus no pleasure Snakes. trip. Let me tell you that. So, so, what? Let's talk about the the trail game. What is some of the earliest documented? Uh, I guess people traveling it or writing about the trail or whatever. Um, yeah, there are uh, well, there are Spanish records going back into the sixteen uh, hundreds, late sixteen hundreds. Um, the um, I would say two of the best documented um, tales, though, uh, uh, along the trail would have been uh, actually by the British. The, the, this, uh, this mount that I'm showing right here behind us was done by uh, a British cartographer as he traveled with a British army uh, across there. And then... Uh, what year was this done? 1778, during the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. They were going over from Pensacola to St. Augustine to aid the British who were being invaded by the rebels. <laughs> and the rebels were us, of course. Right. And uh, the other one, uh, Andrew Jackson <clears throat> marched a lot, uh, along a lot of it over in the West, and he kept pretty accurate records. I can, I can um, the, the mileage he gives from one stream to the other is almost exact. Interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. So, tell us about the trail itself. So it went from Pensacola basically to St. Augustine, and so what was going down the trail? Just mil just trade, common trade, military, <clears throat> gold? I mean, you, yeah. your book is titled The El Camino Royale, so was there, is there bullion somewhere <laughs> on the trail? Is there a Spanish booty somewhere? No, the, the Spanish called a lot of that trail El Camino Real, Royal Roads. Uh, they were simply roads that were owned by the crown, um, and uh, you know it's not what we envision as a royal road by any means. Uh, they were uh, just mainly uh, muddy trails um, that happened to go usually to one of the provincial capitals, be it St. Augustine or Pensacola. Uh, I saw a quote in there where um, I think it was Andrew Jackson was talking about. Um, and, or maybe you know who it is, but uh, uh, the quality of the road and how it will be visible for centuries. Oh, yes. So yeah. that's a true quote. There's parts of the road that are still visible today, right? Very much so. Um, I was very impressed with the broad road that's still preserved over in Little River Springs Conservation Area. Beautiful road over there. Uh, and uh, by the way, that's in Swanee County, and there are so many beautiful uh, springs and road that is preserved over there. Um, over in um, Blackwater River State Forest, uh, there is a very deep indentation in the ground. Over in Alina State Park near Live Oak, um, there is a a deep cut in the ground. Uh, in Leon County on uh, Highway 90, uh, or just off of Highway 90, there's a very deep cut um, that uh, 
someone showed me recently and uh, now you mean cut um, that's where the wagons or whatever cut like rutted themselves yeah, into just, the road or did they build up embankments or was that just no, a natural it, as, wear and tear as far as i can as i know it was just wear and tear on the on the road yeah and so how if you had to make a guesstimation how how many miles of the road do you think are still out there oh you know the florida there's been so much development in florida that um, out of 465 miles of road um, i dare say if there's 50 miles of it left uh, we're we're lucky now that's not to say that um, th these roads have been used even into modern times. So many, some of them have been paved over. They've lost their pristine look, but they're still in there. I, I didn't, you know, there are those as well. For example, the uh, old Bainbridge Road out of um, Tallahassee is built, paved road built on top of the old road. So that way, would that have been like a way to come down from Georgia to connect to the Spanish Trail going? Well, east west. well uh, the, since you brought up Georgia, um, this Spanish trail actually went into Georgia. From um, the Tallahassee area, it went north to uh, Bainbridge. And uh, in fact, in 2013, when I really started getting serious about this project, the only historic marker recognizing the road was to be found in Bainbridge, Georgia. So this road is part of Georgia history as well as Florida. And I might add, it's part of Alabama's as well. This trail actually went into parts of Alabama. So we talked about the, the Spanish trail and, and your involvement in it. And are you being interested in, in old roads and stuff as a kid? But what made you officially get involved in this project? A couple of things. Um, one was... I went out to Oregon, uh, actually Idaho and Oregon, and uh, I went down the uh, old Oregon Trail, and I saw how those states really promoted the history of their trail. They had, uh, th they've written books on it. Uh, there was a visitor center, there are interpretive signs along the way, and I thought, well, you know, why, why don't we have one here in Florida on the old Spanish trail? We've got a trail that's 200 years older than those western trails. Um, that's one thing that uh, motivated me to do it. Uh, the other was that um, 2013 rolled around, and that was the 500th anniversary of the Spanish discovery of Florida. And there was a lot of talk. Uh, there was a, there were a lot of... Uh, events going on celebrating this uh, anniversary and a lot of talk about the uh, Spanish trail and uh, I said well if there's that much interest in it I've got this map I've never gone outside of my area and tried to map anything but I said by golly I can do it so that's the reason I tackle this project and how long did it take you well, um, 2013 was the main year that I worked on it. I, I traveled North Florida, I photo documented the trail, uh, I observed aerial photographs. Most of the work was in that year. But um, after that, um, <laughs> a little procrastination and a lot of hard work. I have a daytime job as well. And then Hurricane Michael took away two years out of my life. Uh, and uh, the pandemic has been, in one way, a blessing, and that was it gave me time off, and I uh, was able to complete this book. So it's taken a while, but it doesn't mean that I did all the hard work in uh, seven or eight years. It didn't take that long. <laughs> So is there any, have you, have you talked about maybe trying to get any funding or anything to, you know, start putting some, some interest in, in preserving the, what's left of the trail and, you know, some placards or what were you, you know, what were you saying, the, the, yeah. the markers? Well, the... well, after 2013, um, I, I went around and, and did some um, 
speaking engagements, uh, and uh, talked to some of the powers that be about it. And, and they actually did put up some interpretive signs now uh, in Florida on this. Uh, but by I, one of the reasons that I did this book was in hopes that it would bring awareness to our heritage. We've got a, a 500 year old object, a uh, uh, part of history that is still in some places still preserved here and we should recognize it. It, it uh, not only for the scholars, uh, for, for the eco-tourists and the heritage tourists, but um, just to be recognized as part of our history just as much as St. Augustine or Pensacola or Fort San Louis in Tallahassee are recognized. And if, if you know someone that's local here to Panama City, where is the closest place that we could maybe see parts of the trail? Uh, in its pristine condition, I would say uh, uh, Blue Springs in Mariana. And they do have an interpretive sign up there. Um, recognizing the Spanish Trail. And if you go to that sign, off to the right, you can see a trace of the old trail there. That's probably gonna be the nearest place. Uh, I'd like to add, though, <clears throat> that um, uh, there was a spur of this trail that came down and actually went through part of Bay County. And uh, it is to be found over in the uh, steel field area, pine log uh, part of uh, Bay County. And there are still some traces of it over in that area. And so I guess uh, the pressing question is, is um, you said some, some parts of the road are still being used today, but what happened to the road itself? How come it fell out of use? Yeah, well, it ceased to be used uh, because it was a very circuitous uh, road. It, uh, the, once America, um, once the United States uh, acquired Florida, they wanted to um, shorten the distance. And they built the federal road. Um, it was a, a more southerly road across uh, North Florida. And um, of course, they had to build bridges, they had to make ferries, but uh, <clears throat> that was the reason. And, and the road that succeeded uh, the Spanish Trail was called the Federal Road. Um, over in uh, the eastern part of Florida, it was called the Bellamy Road. But uh, uh, they, they attempted to straighten it out. And uh, also, of course, settlement patterns changed. And that was another incentive to, to change the road. Instead of uh, a road going to different Indian villages, now it went to uh, white settlements. So we talked earlier about um, the, how safe it was to, to travel the road. So um, were the Native Americans pretty much ambushing people on this road all the time, or was it, did they target uh, just, you know, uh, segments of the population, or? The, the, yes, the, the uh, they got ambushed. Uh, one captain uh, in trying to transport his, his men across the St. John River complained that um, Indians were harassing them on the river, so they were e even out there, not, a, not just in the woods, but out on the, on the open water, they were harassing them in their canoes, I suppose. <laughs> in their skiffs. Uh, yeah. And there was another interesting part of the book where they said that, um, in some places it was so bogged down that the horses were stuck up to their cinch straps in mud. So yeah. how, was that exploratory places down the road that they later improved? Because I can't imagine that being a, a way to get an army through. Yeah, well, these natural bridges were a, a pretty marshy. Um, the natural bridge over the... Um, so, no, let's talk about a natural bridge. I'm thinking of a natural arching <laughs> yeah. bridge with no. water coming under through it and rocks. Yeah. Maybe a bridge no. troll. 
Now the, Describe what a natural bridge in, in, is. Instead of the land arcing over it, the river went down and uh, under the ground, and usually the, the ground above that river, it was very boggy. And uh, that I think it was, um, was it Andrew Jackson's troops or somebody else that got bogged down in um, the natural bridge of the Chipola. Now, if you want to know where that is, the uh, caverns, the state, the, the, the Mariana Caverns are on that uh, natural bridge. Well, Mr. Hurst, thank you again for coming to Forgotten Florida and talking about your book, The Spanish Road. And uh, we'd like to thank the Bay County Historical Society Museum. They are, are at 133 Harrison Avenue, if you'd like to come see them. They have lots of great exhibits here. And um, if you follow the channel, you know that we love obscure Florida history at Forgotten Florida. And this museum is full of it. So please come check it out. And uh, the Appliance Center temporary location right now is at 135 Harrison Avenue. And the print, the print, the print museum, right? Is that what it's called? Uh, the uh, Panama City Printing Museum. That's on Beck. Is on Beck Avenue. It's in pretty Saint hard Island. to miss. Mm -hmm. Big building on Beck. So uh, stop by there to buy a book. Stop by the Appliance Center. Uh, maybe Mr. Hurst will be here. He can autograph it for you. But uh, that's it. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you, Wes.